What's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon. It is the Earthmaster back here on this Tuesday, September 12th, 2023. It's about 10.33 a.m. California time here. Latest quake shows a 1.3 into the area of the West Coast there in California. We'll get to earthquake activity here in a little bit. First, starting off here with a uh, G2 storm coming in unexpectedly. Uh, so we are looking at the potential there of auroras on the dark side of the earth looks like mainly over portions of russia finland maybe even sweden area all getting in on the potential of seeing some auroras up there around the 90 percent level uh, again this is coming in from an unexpected uh, cme not for sure exactly where that came from but it seems like we're getting quite a few of these here recently again g2 storm kicking up kp index up around five to six current levels as you can see there um, from the uh, geomagnetic overview here on the solar ham site shows those conditions reaching up to about the 6 kp level so that will be uh, the deal here throughout the day unfortunately for the folks here in north america area uh, that will not uh, take place unless this continues throughout the evening which i doubt it will but you never know uh, so if you're out there on the other other side of the world get out there see if you can't see some auroras um there is a let's see what kevin says here an unexpected cme past earth this morning uh, although the solar wind speed increase was relatively small the bz component of the interplanetary magnetic field was tipped sharply south for a long duration so that kind of explains why the amplitude or the amplification here of the solar wind is so high right now due to that uh the tilt in the interplanetary magnetic field allowing a lot of that solar wind stream to flow right in all right so unexpected solar events we got anything major going on for flaring activity current look at the magnetogram image here let me bring up today's uh, still shows a couple sunspots here looking somewhat dynamic but not quite oh goodness some of these look like they have died down since last night unfortunately that seems to be the case here recently. Uh, we get these sunspots just kind of kicking up, getting active, and then uh, as soon as they face the Earth, they just they um, they want to calm down. It's like they're behaving. So um, not a lot, not a huge potential here for some flaring. Uh, I think the only sunspot areas that we need to watch are these two up here. But even then, it's not all that uh, great of a threat for some large flares. Uh, further around the northeastern limb of the sun, there's uh, some newer sunspots coming around. But uh, even those don't look all that um, active currently. But we'll continue to keep an eye on them. 99% uh, chance for a C flare. M flare at 55. X flare around 10% chance. Again, we'll continue to watch that. And of course, stay alert for some auroras. As you can see, again, over on this side of the uh, Earth, Un unlit side of the earth i should say uh, and also down around the antarctica area portions of it uh, may be seen some pretty awesome auroras if you're out there all right earthquake activity let's see what we got here from the latest information um, provided by the usgs here we did see some larger scale movement here across the philippines earlier this morning coming up now about six hours old but uh, that activity Pretty large, uh, 6.3, just off uh, the area here, around these islands, 41 kilometers deep. Looks like that was felt uh, by a few folks. You can see historical data, though, is a majorly seismically active zone here, historically. Uh, so it's not... Uh, uh, it's actually very common to see these six-pointers in that area. And that's kind of what we've seen uh, earlier this morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. Also seen some, a little bit of amplification of earthquake activity here off the Japan region and portions of the Filipino plate here. Talking about the Izu Trench and areas uh, over here. It looks like the latest earthquake though is back building across the Izu Trench. Pretty shallow earthquake. This area has been pretty quiet here recently. Uh, up along the Kuro Kamachaka Trench, right around the Kuro Islands. That earthquake coming in yesterday, 4.7. Nothing else showing up here today so far, but uh, we'll continue to watch that. 
A little bit of movement across Indonesia, Solomon Islands, and outside the Loyalty Islands area. Uh, although, looks like the only one from today is going to be this one across the Indonesia area. Uh, look at the EMSC model here on the globe. Uh, shows roughly about the same. A little bit less active, though, uh, than what we had seen yesterday. Most of the movement here, again, confined to the uh, about the Japan area, down through the uh, Taiwan region and the Philippines, all getting in on a little bit of activity today. 2.5 across the Mediterranean. Slight uptick in uh, earthquake activity here today, it looks like, around Turkey and other areas around Greece. Uh, still seeing a little bit of swarming. Well, I should say earthquake activity. This isn't really swarming. This is all aftershock activity here around the Morocco region. Again, following their larger scale movement here a couple days ago, that uh, is definitely expected to continue for a little while. Down into the South America region, there's those two earthquakes from yesterday. Doesn't look like uh, doesn't look like anything else has kicked up there, far as 4.0 and above, but. Quite a few twos and threes working their way down across the plate boundary, this subduction zone here, the Peru-Chile Trench. Um, quite active there today in the two range. And Puerto Rico, we got a couple smaller earthquakes up here. It looks like nothing major. In fact, this looks pretty quiet for uh, the Puerto Rico area. One earthquake up here around the Middle America Trench from yesterday, 5.1. And the EMSC model globe here does show quite a few threes out here. Uh, even a four-pointer, it looks like, off the coast of Mexico. All right, let's see what we got. Uh, 2.7 coming in to the Washington area right now. Eastern Washington, just outside of Spokane, Washington. Goodness, when was the last time we seen an earthquake up there? Uh, looks like that's very close to the uh, Fairchild Air Force Base in Washington. Seven kilometers deep for that 2.7. Uh, that one coming in within the, the last 15 minutes or so. It has been reviewed by a seismologist. Uh, no reports of it yet, as far as anyone feeling it. It's a pretty shallow, earth, or a pretty small earthquake. All right, let's see what else we got here across the Cascades. Mount St. Helens still seeing a little bit of smaller earthquake activity. I was checking that out earlier. Let me see if I can bring those folks back up here. And take a look at Mount St. Helens, which is still currently at a green volcano code. Alert level is normal. Even with the slight earthquake activity we've been seeing up here, uh, they consider that uh, about background levels because earthquake activity does take place here at the Mount St. Helens region on occasion. Uh, and you can see there's a handful of smaller quakes out there. Some of these are very small, uh, and most uh, a lot of these don't even show up at the nearby stations. That tells me that it's uh, you know extremely small microquake activity. Some of these larger events, like this one right here, uh, those earthquakes do show up distantly on other seismograph stations. Uh, but as you can see, some of those smaller quakes, not so much. But we'll continue to watch that uh, for some movement, if it decides to get active or not. A little bit of activity across the uh, Portland area, north of Portland, I should say, 1.1. Uh, the rest of the area, the west coast, Let's see what we got here. We got Lake Almanor shaking slightly from yesterday. Uh, last one late last night, a 2.4 underneath the lake. Pretty shallow, negative 0 0.3. A little bit of activity up here across that fault system. That seen that five-pointer here a couple days ago as well. Some aftershock movement with that 2.0. The rest of the bay, um, pretty quiet aside from a 3.3 near Morgan Hill. Earlier this morning, it looks like, just after midnight or so. The rest of the state, pretty quiet. A couple smaller microquakes out there. One earthquake here in the last hour outside the Ridgecrest area, 2.1. Right, Yellowstone National Park, not a whole lot being reported. So let's double check and see what's out there. Double check the uh, seismograph stations here. Uh, looks pretty quiet. A couple smaller earthquakes here, as you can see in the red thin lines and a couple in the last hour or so, but overall seismic activity there on the quiet side across the Yellowstone region. Uh, the Alaska area, let's see what we got up here. Did have some movement up there yesterday up into the Aleutian Trench. 
looks like some of the activity is spreading across the uh, areas up north here of the Aleutian Trench. So I uh, might want to keep an eye on this area in that linear type fashion here across the subduction zone. Uh, but aside from that, uh, the rest of the Aleutian Trench looks pretty quiet. One earthquake here from yesterday, that's 5.3. Uh, what do we got for Kilauea Volcano? Not a whole lot of earthquake activity, but I think we're still continuing with the volcanic eruption there on the Big Island. For the latest information, we're going to go check out, well, looks like that was put out yesterday. They have not put out a newer one today. Uh, so let's go ahead and check out the, um, the info for ourselves here. Here's one of the webcams. We'll still see some lava out there across the uh, lava lake area at night. That's pretty cool to see. It lights up uh, quite impressively. Let me check out some of these other webcams here. Obviously, there's still quite a bit of volcanic gases there at that uh, region. So yeah, still looks like it's erupt uh, erupting. I'm sure their uh, webcam there on YouTube is a little bit more active looking. But as we can see there, the activity is continuing across the Kilauea volcano. Uh, as far as the seismograph station goes, past 12 hours show very minimal movement. And that is due to the fact that, well, the magma has found a clear source or a clear path to the surface. So we're not you know, seeing all that earthquake activity because it's just flowing freely. Uh, we'll continue to watch that and see how long this continues to stay in the eruptive stage. Could be it for a while. Um, Kilauea Volcano is, quite frankly, one of the most active volcanoes on this planet. All right, uh, what else we got here? New Zealand? I don't see anything popping up here on New Zealand. Uh, what about the Earthquake 3D Globe? Let me see here. A couple threes, it looks like, from last night. Uh, 3.1, there's that one yesterday. Goodness, New Zealand's just not catching up with the times. As far as earthquake activity goes, I mean, that might be a good thing, might be a bad thing. Uh, eventually, this area of the plate boundary is going to have to move, uh, as it should have by now. But uh, not a whole lot of earthquake activity being reported there. All right, latest information here on Hurricane Lee. Uh, I think it's getting ready to track northward. We are looking at... Uh, Fairly steady conditions right now as far as the wind goes. 115 mile per hour sustained winds. <clears throat> that is expected now to track north and weekend uh, as it heads west of the Bermuda area. I think this area is safe for now. It doesn't look like it's even in that cone of uncertainty. Uh, before heading up uh, to the north to the Nova Scotia area as a tropical storm. I'll continue to watch that, monitor that as it gets closer to that area. But it is moving slowly towards the west northwest at uh, six miles per hour. Let's check out the latest numerical model here. I'm going to bring up the. Uh, see which one do I want to bring up? Yeah. That's at work again. A little bit better view. All right, Hurricane Lee. Uh, pretty strong hurricane still, but again, that's expected to weaken a little bit and get uh, broader and disorganized as it heads towards the north. With it looks like, a, again, a potential landfall right around the uh, Nova Scotia area. We're just to the west. Uh, we're still watching this hurricane back here. Well, right now it's not a hurricane, but it's a tropical system. And last night, well... Remember last night? Uh, goes to show you how quick these models can change. Last night, uh, update this showed this hurricane following the same path as uh, Hurricane Lee, but sitting here spinning off the east coast, kind of just bouncing around. Uh, today's weather model, keep an eye on this system right here. Uh, this weather model shows it getting caught back up in the system there around that high pressure. And uh, not even affecting the states. Not even getting anywhere close to it. So it just goes to show you these weather models are not super accurate. 
way out in the future, but we'll continue to watch that and report back on it if anything changes. Severe weather potential today, not a whole lot. I mean, obviously there's a lot of thunderstorm activity, but the severe potential is very minimal. Uh, looks like there's a 2% chance for tornado probability uh, across the uh, Philadelphia area, it looks like. Portions of Virginia in there as well. Uh, but for the main threat, uh, there's really not a whole lot of main threat out here today. Just a lot of thunderstorm activity uh, across portions of the Four Corners and the, uh, the eastern portion there of the states. Live look at some of the seismograph stations here show pretty quiet conditions. Not a whole lot of uh, earthquake activity showing up there on the, um, the charts for now. All right, folks, I'm going to get busy. I got a quite a, a bunch of stuff I got to do today. Today for school, excuse me. Looks like I got hiccups too, so now's a good time to bounce out of here. Have a good one. We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later on this evening with the uh, nightly update. Enjoy your Tuesday and uh, stay safe out there. We'll catch you guys later.